I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Yuri's 2010 Volkswagen GTI. DSG with launch control. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Lots of tire squeal, but then it's good. Yeah, and it actually has that like little like to start off for the launch. So I bought this car so my wife could have something to drive because she can't drive the Element because it's stick and the Prowler is a special car just for me. I feel like you can trick your fiance or wife into letting you buy this more than you can into an ST. She'll complain about the seats in the ST yeah. and she'll know it's a race car here. She'll be like, oh, it's just my nice little white Volkswagen. It's so true actually. So Mr. Manuel buys a DSG Volkswagen, which he's been complaining about in every single review. And then we've got DSG in the car that I'm driving which is so boring, yawn fest. Well, you guys know I'm a Volkswagen fanboy, right? Apparently. And by the way, a lot of people call me out. They're like, you just don't like Volkswagens and you like Hyundai. To be honest, my preference, I do enjoy my time in Hyundais more because the infotainment stuff more, but I do really like Volkswagens and I really had a good time in the GTI. So let's start with the horsepower and torque. Actually, you tell me what the horsepower and torque is. 210 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque. That's pretty respectable for 2010. Yes, and it is a two liter turbo four cylinder. So I'm gonna start this off with a little boot through cliche corner. You know how much I've been loving front wheel drive hatchbacks since like the Veloster N, the Elantra GTN line and everything. Yeah, I mean, you ended up buying one, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use my paddles downshift in there. This is pretty good, man. It's more fun than I thought it would be for a 2010. Even a little like oversteery there. If you lift off oversteer, yes. <laughs> but that's that's fun, like it's actually gripping through. Yeah, this does handle really well, I'll give you that. So let's explain why you bought this particular car. Okay, so I was looking for a car for my wife for a while and I was looking for something like small and cute. Yeah, and you were sending me all these very, very terrible examples. So I was looking at little Fiat 500s because they're cute. I was okay with you getting that. And then I was also looking at like Volkswagen Beetle convertibles and stuff. I was also okay with you getting that. And then I also thought the PT Cruiser because my wife thinks it's cute. And I was totally not okay with that, but I went on a test drive with you. Yeah, and... that was the craziest thing. Oh my God. <laughs> we can't even think we could talk about it. No, we can't. But I did check out a bunch of dealerships. I called them to check stuff out and like, it was kind of a hassle all the time. There's always little things wrong. Like the one Fiat 500, it's like, Oh yeah, the locks are broken, the armrests are snapped, um, the trunk doesn't open, but uh, uh, we'll fix all that if you give the deposit. And that's a new car. It, it felt pretty nightmarish until my buddy decided to sell his GTI because he was getting a Tiguan for family room. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna hop on this. Shout out Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up getting a Tiguan because this is a three door, this isn't a four door. He said if it was a four door GTI, he probably could have kept it. Yeah, so this is actually really cool because they don't make these anymore. And I really like how this looks. And it has the cool wheels that I really like. I love these wheels. These are the best wheels Volkswagen has ever put on this GTI. And I think I mentioned that like three years ago before I even had a dream of owning this. Do you like the wheels on the Autobahn? I love wheels on every single GTI. Yeah. Starting with the one with the circle cutouts, the, which Mark was at. Those are kind of like phone dials from like Porsche days. That was the, best, the best GTI wheels. I agree. I'm a little upset that this isn't on bags yet, but I'll let it slide. This is not, <laughs> this is not gonna get a stage anything tuned. This better be stage three by the end of the year. This is gonna stay stock. Uh, sponsors, if you guys wanna hook us up, I will encourage Yuri to put this to stage three and blow it up. <laughs> I'll, uh, I won't tell my wife, she'll just get behind the wheel like, and she's like, Whoa! Why is this so loud? Why does it keep flashing launch control? <laughs> and then another cool thing about this particular one is it has the Euro tail lights. Yeah, that's right, so you bought it like this. Yeah, our buddy knew how to do up his GT. GTI. Yeah, they definitely look a lot cooler than the stock ones. And he was the original owner, so you know, I knew he took very good care of it. He doesn't like beat up his cars or anything. So it's pretty much the most ideal thing I could have gotten. Yeah, and then you also had Ben look it over before you bought it. Shout out Ben, our mechanic. Yeah, yeah, I got it safety and everything. It was pretty much like the dream car buying experience. Exactly. So before I get you into the driver's seat, first, it does fit a cup of coffee and the cup holders, there's two different sizes. So you can put the small cup at the top, the medium cup at the bottom, and they'll be the same level. There you go. Visor test? Yeah, let's do this. The newer one didn't uh, fare too well a couple years ago. Three, two, one. Oh, ah! yes. Didn't even fly off. And now the box test. Box test. We already have two inside, plus these four make six. Then four more makes 10. More than the newer ones. Somehow. 
shout out box test members. So now I'm gonna get you in the driver's seat to verify how sick this GTI is. So for launch control, we need to turn the ESP all the way off. Then we put it down to sport, hold the brake all the way, floor it, and that's tire squeal. There we go. And it auto up shifts. <laughs> so like we complained about in current GTIs, which you said rattled you very much, this does that. But the way they got around it here is they hit the auto upshift point like halfway through the red lines. Which is kind of funny. So if you're an owner and this is your car, you're probably not gonna push that far anyways because you're probably worried. You're probably gonna shift just over 6,000 even though this shifts much farther than that in automatic. And turning off traction, the light keeps flashing in the gauges. That is actually really annoying. Yeah, but I guess, you know, look up. But the gauges are pretty sick too. They are. We'll talk about it in a second, but let's go through cliche first. Yeah, let's go straight to the point and cliche. So this does have a little tendency to oversteer on throttle liftoff, which is actually hilarious, but this does handle really well. There's a little bit of body roll. I think that's probably something to do with the age of the shocks, but honestly, this handles really really well and it actually keeps up with some pretty fast cars through here how do you how does this feel to you compared to the newer gti's like honestly it feels really good like it, almost think, a little better well because it's not as fake like it does have a fake pumped in audio but let's explain what it actually is well let me talk about the handling first so it does feel very comparable to the new ones but this does have more body roll than the new ones that's about it okay so sound the, thing the sound thing so in 2011, they introduced the Sound Actor, which was like a speaker that pumps in digital audio. But which current ones have. Yes, but before that, we had a noise pipe. So that's what we have. It pretty much is a pipe that goes from your motor to your firewall to add sound. And it actually sounds good. And it's fine because it's authentic. Yeah, so it's real engine sounds being pumped in, not through speakers or anything like that. Yeah, which like, that's cool. That's kind of cool. I think you should just put an intake on here, go stage three, but anyways. Not getting touched. <laughs> and similar to the newer ones, this does have the little dinky plastic paddles, but these are even smaller, which I think is better. Really? Because like, if you're not gonna have good paddles, then make them as small as you can, and I think that's what they did here. Now they're getting a little too big for crappy paddles. Yeah, whatever. I don't really like them, but not my car. Yeah, how about the steering wheel? Does this not feel like it's better leather than current ones? Yes, it feels fantastic. It's also D-shaped. I love how the steering wheel feels. I love the steering feel going through corners and everything like that. Like, it's wild. Okay, another difference. This, we've got the same Volkswagen style key, but you actually have to put it in and turn it. Yeah, old school. So like, look how close your knee is to it. I know. I'm afraid you're gonna snap that right off. Has your knee hit the steering column in this one? No, but I think I know when I drive a Volkswagen, keep my knees spread now. Okay. So that hasn't had, I haven't had an issue with that. And we don't have any gloss black on the steering wheel. No. We do have a little <laughs> bit of gloss black-ish stuff on the dash, but it's like- It's got, it's got a pattern, it, so it's fine. Exactly, I agree. And then the steering wheel button layout, it's like similar to the new ones, but not like it's got overlapping buttons that are kind of weird yeah then if we move on to the gauges you know two analog tacks digital in the middle similar to the new ones but like more lcd old school but it shows my speed and the needles are very very bright but one thing that this doesn't have is the tartan seats yeah that would be cool but these leather seats are really comfortable yeah yeah it was an option that way but like i don't mind it yeah no like, the first time i saw this i'm like oh damn you got leather <laughs> Yes, I uh, picked that from the past. <laughs> yeah. And it still says DSG on the shifter, I which mean, is still. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. The new <laughs> the, ones and the still... new ones still say DSG <laughs> on the shifter. This does have a hand e brake, just like the new ones, which is great. Remember, we tried the little e brake in the um, Jetta. The Jetta, and that was trash. This was fantastic. I agree. And you want to see some cool stuff? There's no USB port. I use the cigarette lighter thing for USB. Yep. But guess what's in here? Uh, something to connect your phone. Something to connect an old iPod iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> he could have optioned it with the USB, but he chose <laughs> the old Apple one. That's funny. And like the new one, this does have a ratcheting armrest that will stay in place. How oh, nice is that? That's great. We've got plenty of back seat room, which is great, but it is a two door, so it's a lot harder to get in. Yeah. Moving back to our front shifter area, we have a lot of blank switches. I know we complained about blank switches in the future videos, which are now the past videos, which Porsche is now doing with weird gloss black stuff. So I'm not allowed to complain about this because of the way other companies are doing weird buttons. I honestly don't even know what else they would option on this. I, like, I want to know what five possible buttons would do in this car. Okay, now let's move on to the infotainment. Yeah, go for it. So Yuri. we have an actual screen. Yes, it, we do. it looks kind of modern and we got hard buttons on the side. So we've got our band media, sound, map, the map, the nav, that stuff's kind of useless, it works. But 
if we go to band, we have satellite radio. And really? we don't have Sirius XM, we just have Sirius because this is before they were merged. But the cool thing is, you could actually get Sirius XM to still play on this. Like they future proofed the old companies. That makes sense. Yeah, so I have satellite radio in my 2010 GTI. Does it rewind? No. Ah. <laughs> but you know what this does with the new ones? Does it do? have tune mix? <laughs> Should I just crash this into a ditch right now? <laughs> no, it's fine. But you know what this has that the new ones also have? What? Look at that volume knob. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed it, that already. It still spins it's, the logo around. Well, it still spins. The new ones still spin. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what I meant. Yes. <laughs> and we've got hard buttons for climate. Overall, it's pretty well set up. And you even have heated seats, which is really nice. I know. Like, this is pretty cool. And, like, the graphics are, like, actually showing up and yeah, everything. Yeah, fancy. It does have a Bluetooth thing here, but the heck if I'm ever going to attach my phone to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to nah, do Not worth it. And I might, I might, if somebody wants to hook it up, put in an aftermarket head unit with Apple CarPlay, maybe we can make a video about that. I know a lot of people requesting it in a the A whole past. video about that? Maybe a whole Instagram video, there follow you us, Yuri Tish and the Straight Pipes, because it would be cool to have Apple CarPlay in here. It'd be nice for you. Now let's dabble with the looks a little bit more, because we already talked about the Euro taillights and the three-doorness. Let's do this quickly. Love the front end, love the rear end, love the side profile. I do, I personally. Okay, okay, that's good then. Yeah, this are, looks great. Are you disappointed that there's no LED strips on the front of it? Yes, I actually am a little bit disappointed about that. But it's cool that it does have red calipers and the Continental recommended tire for the 2010 Volkswagen GTI. Tell me what it is. The Conti Sport Contact 5, just like my Plymouth Prowler. And you haven't had a chance to get those on here yet, but you will. Yes, yes, for sure. Well, I'm gonna get some Viking Contact 7s for the winter probably. For winter, yeah, exactly. And then we also have a little tiny bit of a lip kit on this because this is the GTI. And we do also have some red in the front end because GTI. No one's gonna look at this car, which is actually one of the nice things for me because I can like take it for groceries. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like not the element, I don't have to drive stick and it won't rattle. And it's not the Prowler, I won't have to do a million things and not fit my groceries in there. And it even has grocery hangers in the back. Well, obviously, it's a practical car. Okay, now when I was doing some research on this car, I did watch some YouTube videos of reviews from back in the day, and the funniest thing ever, reviewers from today were reviewing this car nine years ago. Like who? Okay, Redline Reviews, and it was very similar to how he's doing it today, which is awesome, because he's got a catalog of like very consistent views. Good for him. Matt Farah. Oh, that's awesome. And he had some amazing facial hair. Shout out your facial hair. <laughs> then we had Matt Watson for Car Buyer. Okay, before he went to Car Wow. It looks like he hasn't aged a bit, so good job for you too. <laughs> and then also Everyday Driver was doing a thing on this. So it was like right pretty on. funny to see a reviews from before I was doing anything car related and now I'm in like the same gang as all those guys. Yeah, that's cool. Hopefully we can last longer or just as long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are gonna be making fun of us in 20 years exactly. and be like, Jacob had a beard yeah. and Yuri had a weak little mustache. Since you've been so excited, I haven't really had a chance to talk about anything I would like to talk about. Like what? This actually shifts relatively quickly because it is a dual clutch. It doesn't shift as fast as I would like it on upshifts, but on downshifts, it's fantastic. Oh, it's totally 2010 fast. It is. It's great. And but, that engine does pull pretty hard too. Yes, but what's weird about this car for someone who's newer to driving like my wife, since it's a dual clutch, it's got that weird creep and everything all the time. So I feel like it's kind of a bad first car but it's also kind of a wicked first car. Yeah, for parking lot stuff, I can see that being a little bit weird for a first car. So this one was an option with a reverse camera, but it still does have the Volkswagen logo in the back that does open the trunk. You can't open it with that. You have to unlock it and pull the trunk open. Yeah, so like with the key fob, you can't like touch to open, which kind of sucks. I'm so used to it in newer cars. Yeah. But to open the trunk, you need to either unlock it from the inside or hold the trunk button on the key fob before you open it. A little bit annoying. But how about the exhaust tips? Exhaust tips are real. Yes, like it's like wicked. They did so much good stuff back then. They did. So we should probably talk about how much this car costs nowadays. Well, how much does it cost? If you look online, they list from anywhere between 5,000 Canadian to about 12 to 13,000 Canadian. Makes sense. And then I paid somewhere in between and I'm very happy with it. How much were these new? About $28,000 Canadian. So pretty much in line with what they cost now. Yeah, like to be honest, did I do a good job of buying a car. You did a great job. From the ones you were showing me to what you ended up with, uh, I couldn't I be happier with what you ended up with. So let us know what you think of my new GTI. Did I do a good job? Your wife's. My wife's new GTI. Did I do a good job of specking it out, picking a good car? What should I do to it next or should I just leave it the way it is? You guys have some old GTIs that you modded the crap out of because if you did, I want to hear about it so that I can tell Yuri to convince him to go stage three, put it on bags and do a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Don't show this video to my wife if we're going to do a stage three tune to it. Hit the notification bell. Check out patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Join our YouTube membership and check out Teespring for some sick swag. 